Hi everyone, I'm Debbie Roberts, owner and financial advisor at Property Apprentice. Join us today for the Week in Review where I talk about current events for the everyday investor and home buyer. Our topics for this week, first up from the New Zealand Herald on the 18th of April, record number of homeowners fix on one-year terms as they bet on interest rates falling. Topic number two from RNZ on the 15th of April, recession, high interest rates take toll on construction industry. Third topic from One Roof on the 17th of April, mums and dads are now bailing on New Zealand, they think the grass is greener. Fourth topic from RNZ on the 17th of April, inflation drops to 4%, lowest rate in nearly three years. And topic number five from the Auckland Property Investors Association, 15th of April, how to stop the new pet rules from going barking mad. So first up this week in review from the New Zealand Herald on the 18th of April, Record number of homeowners fix on one-year terms as they bet on interest rates falling. Homeowners are increasingly optimistic about a potential drop in interest rates with a significant number opting for one-year fixed terms in February, signalling anticipation of rate reductions ahead. According to CoreLogic's chief property economist Calvin Davidson, 56% of new home loans in February were on one-year terms, a notable increase from the 36% in December. This trend contrasts with the previous preference for longer-term fixes, driven by concerns over rising rates. Despite the willingness to pay higher short-term rates, there's uncertainty regarding when rates might decrease, as highlighted by the Reserve Bank's decision to maintain the official cash rate at 5.5%. Inflation figures for the March 24 quarter show a 4% increase marking a slight decline from the previous quarter but remaining above the Reserve Bank's target range, which is 1-3%. to 3%. Economists' forecasts were generally in line with these figures, indicating ongoing inflation challenges. Meanwhile, house prices have seen a modest rise, with the national median sale price increasing by 2.7% year-on-year to 800000 in March. Although total property sales for March were up by 7.4% compared to February, the market's performance varies across regions with some areas showing growth while others remain flat or weaker. Also, it is important to point out that January and February do tend to be quite slow months, so there is usually an uptick in the number of sales in March each year. Davidson notes that stretched affordability and high mortgage rates continue to challenge the market, leading to increased housing stock and downward pressure on prices. Overall, the the property market's recovery is described as subdued with expectations for continued muted conditions given the current interest rate environment. Second topic for this week in review from RNZ on the 15th of April, recession, high interest rates take toll on the construction industry. A long-standing building company has been forced to close its doors due to a significant downturn in business. Tony Boyce, owner of Tony Boyce Builders, is wrapping up remaining projects this week before shutting down the company permanently. Boyce described the challenges of having no incoming work and the difficulty of laying off his team as the most troubling aspect of this situation. Despite reducing his team to nine members and injecting substantial funds to sustain operations, Boyce made the tough decision to cease operations, feeling a sense of disappointment and failure. The broader construction industry is also facing difficulties with consumer spending tightening amid concerns about a recession and high interest rates. Boyce noted that even experienced builders are seeing their work pipeline diminish drastically, reflecting the widespread impact across the sector. Tommy Honey, the Executive Director of the New Zealand Construction Industry Council, acknowledged the industry's current struggles, citing uncertainty caused by government policy changes. While some measures, like allowing imported building supplies, are welcomed, others have left the industry uncertain and lacking clear direction. Despite the challenges, both Boyce and Honey expressed optimism about the industry's eventual recovery. They emphasised the importance of perseverance through this tough period, and urged stakeholders to exercise caution and diligence when undertaking new projects or investments. Recent reports indicate a slowdown in building cost inflation, offering some stability to homeowners, home builders and renovators. However, builders continue to experience a decline in workload, 
with an increasing number facing liquidation. The hope is that building consents will stabilise soon, aligning with strong population growth driven by net migration to facilitate the construction industry's resurgence. It's never a good thing when we see building companies go into liquidation. It does mean that there's people that are obviously struggling financially out there. And unfortunately, this is one of the things that happens in this stage of the economic cycle and the property cycle. So if you're struggling at the moment, hang in there. It will get better sooner or later. If you can hang in there, then do that because we're certainly going to need more builders moving forward once the property market starts to recover again. If you'd like to learn more about investing in property, join me at one of our free events called How to Succeed with Property Investing. I'll discuss strategies for successful investing from my perspective as a financial advisor, available live online or in person. Check out propertyapprentice.co.nz for upcoming dates and register today. We don't sell property, so it's all about increasing your knowledge to reduce your risk. If you've already been to one of our free events and would like to find out more about how we can help you to reach your financial goals, you can also book a no-obligation phone call or meeting with my husband, Paul Roberts, via the website, and that's propertyapprentice.co.nz. Topic number three, from one roof on the 17th of April, mums and dads are now bailing on New Zealand. They think the grass is greener. The trend of Kiwis relocating to Australia appears to be resurging, with grandparents and empty nesters selling their long-held homes to join family members settled across the Tasman. Real estate agents have observed a notable increase in people moving to Australia, either to reunite with family or due to the perception of lower living costs. More than 200 properties listed on one roof mention Australia, with a quarter of them located in Auckland. According to Harcourt's auctioneer Aaron Davis, the migration momentum towards Australia is consistently growing, predominantly towards cities like Sydney, Melbourne, Perth or Brisbane. Approximately one third of homeowners he encounters are relocating for family reasons or in pursuit of a more affordable lifestyle. However, some facing financial strain in New Zealand, particularly those who purchased at the market peak, are finding it challenging to sustain their circumstances amidst rising interest rates. This has prompted an increasing number of middle-class individuals to consider moving to Australia. Harcourt's agent, Harsh Kathuria, estimates that around 40% of the properties he handles are being sold by owners heading to Australia. Despite expectations that political changes might alter this trend, there has been sustained interest in relocating. I mean, to be fair, it's still pretty early days for the current political coalition. Examples include families for Perth after decades in Otara and Brisbane following their children's move from Clover Park. Homeowners cite better, sta better living standards and reduced financial pressure as motivating factors for their relocation. Real estate professionals like Kapil Rana from Barfoot and Thompson and Monica Maynard from Ray White are handling sales for Kiwis relocating to Australia, emphasising the allure of cheaper housing and higher income across the Tasman. David Ding of Harcourts views this migration pattern as a new norm, akin to other property trends, reflecting ongoing interest in relocating to Australia among New Zealanders. I think it's a bit of a blight on our society that this is the first time we've seen the brain drain in New Zealand where our youngest and brightest potentially are considering relocating to Australia because they don't see a future for themselves here. It's the first time we've seen this since the 70s. So, you know, it is not a good sign, but clearly people reached their breaking point over the last year or two. Fourth topic from RNZ on the 17th of April, inflation drops to 4%, lowest rate in nearly three years. Annual inflation has decreased to its lowest level in nearly three years, according to Stats New Zealand data. Consumer prices rose by 0.6% in the three months to March, bringing the annual rate down to 4%, which is the lowest since June 2021. This aligns with economists' expectations, but exceeds the Reserve Bank's forecast of 0.4% quarterly increase and an annual rate of 3.8%. So we're still higher than what we need to be before the Reserve Bank feels confident about reducing that OCR. 
rising rents, rates, construction of new houses, household energy and alcohol and tobacco costs were key contributors to inflation, offsetting cheaper transport costs. Rent prices surged by 4.7% 4, 4 over the year, while construction and rates increased by 3.3% and 9.8% respectively. If only there were more landlords in this country providing more rental properties to balance out that supply and demand imbalance that we've got at the moment. Recreation and culture also drove annual inflation, driven by rising prices for international accommodation and services like subscription TV and movie tickets. Despite overall inflation easing, domestically generated inflation remains strong, posing challenges for the Reserve Bank to achieve its 1-3% to target band by the end of this year. Economists expect inflation to return to target by the September quarter, potentially opening the door for rate cuts from November onward, depending on economic conditions and underlying inflation trends. My opinion on this is we should be getting inflation data monthly, like most of the rest of the world, uh, because once a quarter is a bit too slow in times like this. I suspect that the Reserve Bank is going to wait too long before they start to reduce. They could potentially start looking at reducing much sooner, but you know they do need that data to back up their decisions because they can't afford to make any more mistakes. Otherwise, they lose the confidence of the New Zealand public. Topic number five from the Auckland Property Investors Association, or ARPIA, on the 15th of April, how to stop the new pet rules from going barking mad. The rental regulations landscape is undergoing significant changes, especially regarding pet ownership and rental properties. With impending law revisions aiming to facilitate broader pet ownership, landlords must grasp their rights and responsibilities in this, in this evolving environment. Proposed changes will require landlords to have reasonable grounds for refusing pets in rental properties. However, defining reasonable grounds presents challenges due to factors like property suitability, local bylaws, pet behaviour and tenants' compliance with conditions. Serena Gibbon, General Manager of the Auckland Property Investors Association, ARPIA, stresses the need to balance landlords' interests with tenants' rights. Gibbon highlights that pet-owning tenants show longer commitments to rentals and praises policymakers for proactive solutions. I couldn't agree more with Serena on that front uh, because we always found the same thing. And even when we were tenants ourselves, trying to find a rental property that would allow us to have pets was problematic to say the least. So I think this is a really good move uh, on behalf of both landlords and tenants. It reduces the risk for the landlords and also increases tenants' chances of being able to find somewhere to rent when they've got cats or dogs that um, some landlords might have been a bit nervous about previously. However, Gibbon calls for clarity and decisiveness in the legislation to ensure it benefits both landlords and tenants. APIA acknowledges potential challenges for landlords, such as subjective criteria for refusing pets that could lead to disputes. Gibbon emphasises the importance of mechanisms for expediently addressing issues like property damage. To address these concerns, APIA is engaging with the Ministry of Housing and Urban Development and the Select Committee to advocate for balanced legislation. Landlords are encouraged to support RPA's efforts for clear guidelines that foster better landlord-tenant relationships. 100% support them with that. In navigating towards pet-friendly rentals, landlords can influence rental regulations by engaging in advocacy. RPA offers guidance and support to landlords navigating this evolving landscape advocating for their interests and fostering dialogue with policymakers. Property investment offers the potential for long-term wealth creation. Even later in life, investing in property can provide a source of passive income during retirement or supplement existing income streams. If you want to start your journey today, because you can't start any sooner, join me at one of our free events called How to Succeed with Property Investing. During these two-hour workshops, we cover off the most recent property market data, and as an experienced property investor and a financial advisor, I'll also be sharing valuable insights and expert tips to help you on your journey. Our free events cater to all levels of property investors and also first-home buyers. I'll tell you more about how we help our clients to achieve their financial goals 
So if you're interested in finding more about what we do, or you know someone else who might be, visit propertyapprentice.co.nz today, secure your spot and register for one of our free events. Alternatively, book a no-obligation phone call or meeting with my husband, Paul Roberts, through our website. That's propertyapprentice.co.nz. Thanks for listening. Oh, and just on a side note, uh, there might not be a week in review next week, or it might be a bit late getting uploaded because Paul and myself are heading away for a week. So stay tuned to the next episode and we'll look forward to seeing you then. Thanks.